Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and in this video I'm going to take the Concorde, a freeware Concorde from St. John's International in Newfoundland to Keflavik in Iceland and so this will be interesting, it's a little bit flickery out, well at least from the cockpit it was but this is our uh, Concorde right now, it's looking pretty good from the outside the, the interior is at least accurate and it's got all my familiar dials in the in the Concorde, including the center of gravity indicator, which is um, a bit of a trick here because I don't actually know how to redistribute the fuels in this particular version, which is how you manage the center of gravity. But no matter, uh, we'll do the best we can. It's probably got to be really hard to trim out, at least in previous occasions it has been. I'm going to drop the nose, of course. That works. Take that from outside. I mean, in general, it seems to work like the Concorde. It's just a certain fiddly bits that, uh, and especially the center of gravity issue that I'm not clear on. And uh, yeah, also, I haven't actually found my fuel gauge. I found the fuel flow gauges, but anyway, anyway, let's get on with it. And of course, we'll be listening to the Apollo 12 audio. And I think where we left off was where they were about to do mid-course uh, correction number two. And so I'm going to start there with the audio as we prepare to take off. This is Apollo Control. Uh, we now read uh, 30 hours, uh, 46 right. minutes into the flight of Apollo 12. Continuing to Here monitor uh, these preparations for the mid-course correction to burn. Okay, coming up on seven minutes. Pick up the checklist at uh, minus six. Yeah, I'm using a twist uh, on the joystick for the rudder. This thing does climb very quickly, even without the afterburners. Oh, I do need to pick up the nose. I don't have that on the lever. Whoa. Okay, Al, uh, let's bring on uh, bus ties. That is quite an angle. I don't know if they'd really do this, but it can. Okay. Definitely can. TCC servo power 1AC1 main A. 1AC1 main A. TCC servo power 2AC2 main B. 2AC2 main B. Road control power normal 2 to AC. Road control power direct 2 to off. Off. Mag mode 3 of that one rate 2. Yeah, one rate 2. Space ground control SCS. SCS. Rotation hand controller number 2 arm. Number 2 is arm. Okay. Primary TVC check. Gimbal motor. Looking really good with go all these clouds, on. actually. Okay, Al, you ready? Pitch 1, go. Pitch 1. No, mark. I need to keep climbing. I got it. Go on. Mark. I got it. Okay, verify trip control and set. Trim. 5, 5, 6. Minus two five. Okay, want to verify that, Al? Bit of choppiness here. It'll correct itself. MPC. I guess right. it was loading right. something. Okay, spacecraft control to CMC. Okay, CMC. I think it's better now. Uh, getting there. Clockwise. Clockwise. Verify no MTV. No MTV. Okay, secondary DVC check. Gimbal motors, pitch two, yaw two, start. Rail. Yep. Pitch two, mark. That's got weird. Got got I don't know what. Mark. I guess it must be all the clouds. Okay, set the GPI trim. I don't know. Trip set, verified. Okay, verify MTVC. And MTVC. Okay, translation and controller neutral. Neutral. Verify no MTVC. No MTVC. Verify GPI well, let me try zero, something. Zero, zero. Okay, road control power oh, two. Oh, that didn't do any difference. ACDC. ACDC. Road control power direct That's two. worse, main okay. BMAG both three up to rate two. Rate two. Proceed. Trail. There's just a lot of clouds. Okay. It's complete. BMAG both three up at one rate two. At one rate two. Enter. Okay, it's moving Enter. out now. Okay, there's a 204. Much Trail. better. Triple trip check. Plus two, minus two. Goodness gracious, if 
rattles the whole thing. Line is two. Yeah. Sure. Moves it around, but it'll be. Yeah. Okay, there's okay, trim. Trim at once, and line is quarter. Okay, and you're standing by at three minutes and 40 seconds and counting. Roger 12, trim look good here. Roger, Roger, Houston. We're at uh, 26,000 okay, feet, 27,000 feet, 28,000 feet. Those shadows really irritate me. I should increase okay, the resolution of those or something. The jagged edges sometimes really ruin it. Okay, we're gonna try and break the sound barrier soon. We'll sort of level out and wait till it creeps up close to Mach 1. Trimming out in this doesn't work very well, generally speaking. 2 minutes uh, 30 seconds from time of ignition. Now without afterburners it shouldn't be able to go past Mach 1, I think. Unless we're using a little bit of them. It doesn't seem that way. Well, okay, we're sort of going down. Well, it seems to be able to, but anyway, afterburners anyway. I think we might have been using a touch of afterburner. Okay, up we get. Okay, there's two minutes, Dick. Delta V thrust A to normal. Delta V A is normal. Translational hand controller arm. arm. Rotational hand controller arm. Now, SPS helium valves, two of them, auto. They're auto. And let's have it uh, high bit rate, record forward, command reset. Standing for 35 seconds. Okay. Alrighty, type three. Okay, we definitely need to climb now. Not efficient to be using the aftermers too much down here. And we'll switch them off at the can uh, super cruise and all. Once we get to Mach 2. Okay. Let's see if we can level out here. Carefully, carefully. Okay. I've totally busted this plane before through aerodynamic stress. Very easy to do that. Okay. Picking up that Mach number. They're just doing a nine second correction right now. Okay, I'm out after the now. So much trouble to do a 20 meter per second burn they have, but that's how it is. Yeah, yeah. 
How's the wind? Uh, sort of with us. Sort of not. We're a little bit past that Mach number limit. Again, this is tough to trim, unfortunately. So I'll be going up and down a bit. Trying to use the pitch trim to get to uh, go down a little bit, but that's not working. Just have to manually turn it. There now. Okay. Not that it'll be completely stabilized. Well, Again, you can take a look at how the center of gravity looks. That doesn't seem right. I don't know if that's what's causing the pitch trim to have trouble or if it's something else. It could just be a bad reading on the CG. Gotta and be. Now that engine look, Jerry, to the gentleman on the ground. Look very good, and uh, we don't need any more information. Roger, right, thank you. Oh. It's gonna be a okay, Dick, let's, mostly uh, uneventful day for them. Okay, maybe that's and all right for now. Huh? It's so tilting. Now while we're doing it, why don't you grab the camera and uh, swish her around here. Okay. Otherwise, that's pretty good. So it is a long trip to uh, Keflavik, it's uh, 1,393 nautical miles, basically an hour at this speed. Oh god, start yeah. turning again. Um, maybe a little bit more than an hour. Oh, it started going up. And again, I'm trying not to use autopilot, but this is one plane that sure tempts me. Oh, what you're seeing is a reflection of the uh, fluorescent lights in the window. I couldn't figure that out from 
Actually, on a previous uh, Concorde flight, I, I saw some interesting unidentified flying objects. Sure that we don't go over speed or anything. Mach 2.11 right now. Say, Houston, do you have any words on us? What uh, may have happened to our uh, helium? Uh, excuse me, our RCS uh, uh, RCS gauge, propellant quantity gauge. Do you apparently have? Do you have TM on the ground, or are you just taking this from pressures and? Uh, and temp, helium pressure temp. Remember, their, their propellant gauge doesn't work. <laughs> uh, negative, Pete, uh, we don't have TM on that on the ground. We're using the pressures and temperatures to figure it. The TM being telemetry, uh, I think. So basically, they're just uh, estimating from the pressure and temperature of the tanks. Okay, you want the uh, PTC checklist? 12, Houston, uh, RTM is showing the same thing you're seeing off scale high. Yeah. I see. I understand. That's a bit of a problem. Well, <laughs> I mean, let's, uh, let's turn A and B off again for uh, 20 minutes to stabilize. You can turn Houston. Stand by 12. I don't think that was very reassuring. Yeah, he said he concurred. Okay, quads A and B are off, and we'll sit here and stabilize. Okay, 12. Stabilizing would be good, Concord. I'm just trying to get the pitch trim to... Okay, well, actually, it's doing something now. Seventeen thousand three hundred and eleven nautical miles in altitude. You know what you got now? You get the you hear the thruster fire, and we're getting a little propellant slosh. I'll bet you. Could very well be. Sure is taking a while to settle down. Yeah, one downside to my uh, XP display. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 31 hours, uh, 3 minutes uh, down to the flight Apollo 12. MCC 2, uh, the burn uh, was some 9 seconds in duration. A preliminary uh, evaluation uh, following this burn uh, would put Apollo 12's point of closest approach to the moon at 64 nautical miles. Yeah, XP display is what's okay, showing me. 12, uh, you guys are looking real fine. That was a nice burn. Okay. Well, that's good at least. Yeah. Our compliments to your cameraman. <laughs> yeah, they're recording this and transmitting okay. it by TV. Wish we could see it. That'd be interesting. We uh, have lost our television picture at this time. Uh, we now read uh, 31 hours of uh, four minutes into the flight of Apollo 12. 
We have an external display Coming with a moving up, map. Uh, momentarily in the uh, MSC News Center uh, will be the change of shift briefing with uh, Flight Director Jerry Griffin and uh, Capsule Communicator Paul Weitz. And my external map is in Mercator projection, unfortunately. So, yeah. Uh, so Greenland looks huge, right? And uh, I can't accurately tell the distance between Newfoundland and Iceland right now because, you know, as you go up in latitude, which we are, everything gets stretched. So, yeah. Uh, slight flaw to my moving map that I'm using to navigate here. Oh, and we're going up a little bit quickly here. We broke below Mach 2. Oh, 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 oh. While it's trying to talk. Oh, jeez, it's really... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough one, this plane. Definitely would be uh, interesting. Houston, we're starting the data dump now. Definitely would be interesting getting the payware one. I haven't. That's by Koli Mata, uh, who also made uh, the 12, Houston. F-18 that I do have. Uh, we we Roger. Tried to fly the F-18 around the world once. It's one of those planes that is very comfortable to fly. Be a good altitude if I can coax this. Again, gotta really not be any, not be violent with it, but it can start going down and up really fast. What a way of saying it. Say again, 12. Uh, we're planning to hear it up now, that's okay. Yeah, no problem, 12. Go ahead. Okay. Yep, suddenly it's turning. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 31 hours, 8 minutes, uh, now into the flight to Apollo 12. The uh, change of shift news conference is due to start in the news center in approximately 2 minutes. Uh, we will be taking down the uh, live air ground at this time, and we'll tape and play back as soon as the uh, change of shift news conference has been concluded. And this is Apollo Control Houston. Too rushed. Okay. Really looks good uh, from this sort of angle with full sunlight and everything. 
probably the best situation for it. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 31 hours uh, 34 minutes now into the flight to Apollo 12. Apollo 12 is currently 118,620 nautical miles away from the Earth. Its velocity now reads uh, 4,235 uh, feet per second. During the change of shift news conference, uh, we had uh, brief conversations with the Apollo 12 crew and uh, we'll play that tape for you now. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, did you do a few cell O2 purge before the burn? Uh, negative, we just... Okay, we just send you a delay it till your next uh, opportunity at uh, 40 hours. Oops, they missed that. Well, we're here at 40 hours, thank you. Uh, we're sorry, we missed that. No sweat, well. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, looks like your rates are low enough now to start PTC. Uh, we notice your CNC mode switch is in the hold position and you should be in auto. Okay. There she goes, Houston. Roger, 12. Uh, Houston, this is 12. Uh, do you want us to disable all jets or just work in this 30 degree dead band until the uh, uh, sleep period? Uh, 12 Houston, you can turn them off now if you want to. Okay, uh, just save it a couple that may fire on us or something. Roger. So they started the barbecue roll. Hello, 12 Houston. And they were just asking whether they could just turn Roger. off the RCS. Uh, Roger, uh, go FN antenna to Omni and Omni Bravo. Roger, Omni, Omni, Bravo. Oh, this is Apollo again. Control, Houston. Although we're looking at uh, a relatively light, uh, blank uh, flight plan for the remainder of the evening and expect a, a quiet evening, we'll uh, leave the release line up live at least for a while. If uh, we continue to have uh, long uh, intervals uh, between conversations with the crew we'll take the uh, release line down and and play back the tapes at uh, periodic intervals at whoa, whoa, uh, 31 whoa, whoa, whoa. hours uh, 37 minutes into the flight uh, this is apollo control houston Clouds resetting, as they will do occasionally. Lots of clouds today. Probably for the best, just cloudless ocean is really boring. Forty knots right here, to battery, the side. Uh, vent, uh, battery compartment's been vented, and we started charging bat A at thirty-one thirty-seven. Roger, Pete. Right. <laughs> uh, stand by, 12. We'll start checking. Random master alarms. Yep, this mission is all sorts of fun. Apollo 12, Houston. Go. Roger, we don't see much out of the ordinary, Pete. Uh, we're on low bit rate right now, and we'll be getting high bit rate shortly where we can look at things a lot more closely. About the only suspicious item is your uh, O2 flow rate is just a shade high, but uh, we see nothing else. 
Okay, we're venting the uh, the uh, urine uh, system, that new one, and we're just letting it run. I'll go shut her off. Okay, Pete. Looking at the earth down there, uh, Houston, it looks like you're littler than a golf ball at arm's length now. Sure looks pretty though, the Terminator looks like it's, uh, it's kind of hard to tell from this distance, looks like it's passing somewhere just west of Tallahassee. No, we've lost some speed here. Uh, Roger, Pete, it's uh, just getting dark out here now. Oh, faster. Got plenty of throttle to work with. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Roger, your accumulator cycle just about the time you got that master alarm, so it may have been an O2 flow high, and uh, uh, you may have just had a flicker on your uh, matrix panel. Okay. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 31 hours uh, 48 minutes uh, now to the flight Apollo 12. We uh, currently read a velocity on Apollo 12 at uh, 4,214 uh, feet per second. Its present altitude uh, 119,204 nautical miles. Whoa, uh, we suddenly got a downdraft. Uh... Obviously, this is not a normal route for the Concorde. It could go directly from New York to Paris, about all this business. But. But I wanted to do a one hour. Oh no, not the music again. Not the music. Must talk over the music so that it doesn't cause any problems. Roger, 12. Okay. Uh, we'll have some scores for you shortly. Yeah, I wanted to keep the flight to an hour, of course. Houston, reading you loud and clear on uh, voice. Uh, Roger, did you get the transmission a while ago? Uh, we got a uh, few words and a little bit of music and then a quit. Oh, okay. I think you lost our antenna back then. Oh, we're going to we're trying fast. all these things that we didn't have in Germany, like toothpaste and shaving and uh, <laughs> really have a ball up here. Uh, confirmed. Roger. They didn't have toothpaste and shaving on Gemini. Gemini. Uh, I could have sworn I saw a picture. I guess maybe not. I guess they all came back all with beers. All dressed up and no place to go. Oh, we're going someplace. We can see it getting bigger and bigger all the time. I've throttled down already. Uh, I'll throttle down some more. It's temperamental. Apollo 12, Houston, I have a little sports news for you. Okay. Roger, the uh, Phoenix 200 is uh, still in a hole status. They apparently couldn't get past the thunderstorms. And here's some scores for you. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Roger, uh, some scores. Texas Tech 41, Baylor 7. These are all finals.
Texas 69, TCU 7, Arkansas 28, SMU 5, Rice 7, the Aggies 6, Northwestern 30, Indiana 27, Michigan 51, Iowa 6, Wisconsin 55, Illinois 14, Ole Miss 38, Tennessee 0, Missouri 40, and Iowa State 13. And the scores on the West Coast are starting to come in now. Uh, Dick, you'll be happy to hear Washington and Southern Cal are tied 7-7 seven seven in the third quarter. And uh, Oregon is uh, in the third quarter is ahead of oh, UCLA 10-7. Jerry, uh, makes me happy, but I bet it doesn't make you happy, does it? Game's not over, Dick. <laughs> We've been trying to look at the United States through the uh, binocular, and um, it, it just looks like uh, both of the states is covered with clouds. Are you having bad weather uh, generally over the country? Uh, we'll have to take a look at a, an overall map, but here in Houston, it's been Cavu all day and beautiful, a wonderful clear fall day. Have not heard of Cavu before. Don't know where that comes from. Okay. Uh, 12 Houston, Dick, I got bad news for you. Final USC 1 6, Washington 7. <laughs> Boy, you sure changed that in a hurry, didn't you? Yes, he did. I didn't want to give you too long to gloat over that one. Gloating over just being tied. Jeez, rough. For a sad bag of me, Jerry, I was about to bet you. I should have waited. It's Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, we currently show Apollo 12 at an altitude of 119,954 nautical miles. Got a weather map here for the United States. All up through the northeast uh, part of the country, it looks like it's either overcast or broken. And then uh, there's in the a southeast weird plane and there. In the south and Flying higher than us. The Panhandle of Texas. Just down into Florida. It's all clear. And then moving on further west, you get into New Mexico, Arizona, California, and you begin to pick up uh, overcast skies again. All the way from uh, Montana, all the way down to Arizona. Montana's got a few uh, broken and scattered clouds uh, in the eastern side, and it's pretty bad over in the western side. Yeah, we uh, we could uh, we were having a hard time picking out exactly what we were looking at. Even with the binocular, everything is now tends to be brown, uh, and I have a hard time picking out the land from the water. But uh, it seems like uh, part of the country that we can see. There's another weird well plane with uh, clouds. Roger, looks like the whole west coast is socked in. Oh, so won't show on the map. Don't know what they are. Very mysterious. Not a whole lot of planes that can fly higher than this. It's Apollo Control. And the weather system is a great big high uh, sitting on, down over old Gulfport Biloxi area. So that's why we're so clear down in the southeast. We have a weak high up around the Four Corners area of uh, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. And, uh, and everywhere else is just bad news. Can I stay? How are families doing, uh, Jerry? I haven't talked to him, but I'll uh, make a few calls and give you some answers. Okay, appreciate that every day if you could. Will do her. Everybody's probably at supper right now, so I'll probably catch them all at home.
This is Apollo Control at 53 hours 31 okay, minutes. Okay, we uh, that's where the Apollo 12 tape is missing. Now 162,315 nautical miles. So we've jumped. Velocity 2,826 feet per second. Oh, and we're going a bit high here. The changes shift news conference in the MSC news center will be at 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. 4.30 p.m. for the change of shift news conference. So yeah, uh, basically they were at the end of day two. This is Apollo Control at 53 hours. And we're now at the beginning minutes. of day three. This is a quiet period as the crew is having breakfast. We are in the midst of a shift change over here in the control room. We'll take this release line down now and come back up when there's further conversation. This is Mission Control Houston at 53 hours, oh, we lost 43 minutes. a lot minutes. of speed there. It went too high. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 53 hours, uh, 57 minutes. Now to the flight Apollo 12. The Apollo 12 spacecraft at uh, this time, 162,988 nautical miles in altitude. Its uh, velocity now reads uh, 2,807 feet per second. In the Mission Control Center, uh, we've just had a turnover in uh, flight controller teams. Pete Frank and uh, members of his orange team are now aboard, uh, replacing uh, the uh, Jerry Griffin team. Our capsule communicator for this shift uh, will be Don Lind, who has uh, just taken over the console from Paul Weitz. As was reported earlier, the uh, mid-course correction number three burn will not be done. And uh, the crew, the Apollo 12 crew, uh, presumably at this time is having breakfast. Uh, they were awakened approximately an hour ago uh, with the uh, call of uh, Reveille. We'll actually hear Reveille later on, I think on the next morning. The uh, change of shift news conference is scheduled to begin as previously announced at 4.30 and uh, we'll include uh, Flight Director Jerry Griffin and uh, the Public Affairs Officer uh, Jack Riley. At uh, 53 hours, uh, 58 minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Yeah, I have trouble identifying all the PAOs, the Public Affairs Officers. Uh, I think I've got Jack King's voice, but the rest are all like a mystery to me. Because uh, they never identify themselves or uh, get identified in the transcripts, they all just are this PAO. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 54 hours uh, 22 minutes, uh, now into the flight uh, Apollo 12. The uh, spacecraft presently 163, 645 nautical miles in altitude, now traveling at uh, 2787 uh, feet per second. We've accumulated uh, some tape uh, communications uh, with Apollo 12 uh, during the news conference. Uh, during these transmissions, uh, Commander Pete Conrad expressed a curiosity uh, common to most newsmen covering Apollo 12. He wanted to know how far out they were and how fast Apollo 12 was going. We'll play those tapes for you now. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Pete, we've uh, looked at the situation here. We don't think that a mid-course number three is going to be required. We're uh, still evaluating number four. It'll be small if we need it at all, so there will be no mid-course number three. Also, we'd like you to balance the uh, hydrogen for the uh, fuel cells uh, by turning uh, tank number two heater off. And uh, do we get those uh, back in balance? Also, for your information, the uh, Phoenix uh, races uh, were rained out after 53 laps yesterday, and so they're going to be rerun today, and we'll uh, let you know the outcome. Okay, very good. And uh, hydrogen tank two heater is off. Roger. How's breakfast this morning? It's in, it's in work right now. Very good. Fine. 
Uh, Houston, 12. Go. Uh, 12 is Houston, go ahead, Pete. Uh, let's Houston, go down Apollo again. 12. Oh. Apollo 12, Houston, go ahead. Not quite connecting up on communications there. Houston, Apollo 12. Apollo 12, Houston, go. Roger. Two questions. Uh, one, how far out are we? And two, uh, what time do we reach the lunar sphere influence? Uh, Roger, I'll get those numbers for you, Pete. Uh, you might want to turn your uplink squelch off. We're uh, kind of low on signal strength, and you may not hear us very well. I've called you several times, so that may be a cure. Yeah, I think we were just in the process of switching the antennas or something. Okay. Uh, Pete, the uh, time for your crossing the lunar sphere of influence is uh, 68 plus 30 plus one minor. Uh, your altitude above the Earth is 163,280. Your altitude above the Moon is 63,190. Okay, and how fast are we going now? Two seven minor seven. Well, I'll do the math on uh, that. Uh, okay. Two thousand seven hundred ninety-seven feet per second is eight hundred fifty-two meters per second. So, uh, well, at sea level, that would be less than Mach three. But of course, totally different situation. Uh, a question: uh, We wanted to know whether you wanted to uh, manage the antennas. Oh, we're going too high you again. To continue switching back and forth. Don't wobble. We've gone to high gain now, but we'd like you to switch back and forth. Okay, if uh, if they, uh, you're going to leave control of that down on the ground, they would prefer to stay in Omni only and uh, turn off the high gain. Okay, we'll go back to Omni. Fine, thanks very much. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, that time uh, passed to Apollo 12. Uh, that time for crossing the lunar sphere of influence was ground elapse time of 68 hours, uh, 30 minutes, 19 seconds. Uh, you just heard uh, Commander Pete Conrad talking back and forth with uh, the capsule communicator in mission control, Don Lynn. At uh, 54 hours, uh, 27 minutes uh, now into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, that's quite a solid cloud cover right there. Relentless clouds. We're well past the halfway waypoint, by the way. Um, again, I'm dealing with this Mercator projection thing. We're probably about four or five hundred nautical Apollo miles out. Houston at uh, 54 hours uh, 47 minutes down to the flight. Apollo 12 now uh, 164,328 oh, uh, nautical miles above Earth. Its uh, velocity now reads on our digital displays uh, 2,700 and 67 feet per second. We've uh, just passed up to uh, Commander Pete Conrad the uh, Phoenix 200 uh, unofficial but final race results and uh, had additional conversation with both Conrad and uh, Dick Gordon. We'll play those conversations for you now. Okay, doesn't look like the wind is particularly strong right now. Houston 12. Houston go. 
Apollo 12, this is Houston, go ahead. Apollo 12, Houston. Houston, Apollo 12. Uh, 12, go ahead. Roger, we uh, changed out the LIOH canister and the LAMP CM Delta P is 1.8. 1.8 what? Two. Roger, thank you. Uh, seems like every time you call, you catch us with our up-link uh, signal down. The lithium hydroxide is changed in 182 for the Delta P. Uh, you're breaking up. I think we're changing the antenna. Say again. Uh, Roger, confirm or got your uh, lithium hydroxide change out and Delta P at 1.82. Roger. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, for your information, the uh, Phoenix 200 is over. We uh, still have only unofficial results, but the unofficial results uh, show Al Unser as the winner. Number two is Ruby, and number three is Don Ellenbach. Roger, thank you very much. Very good. Hello, Houston 12. Uh, Houston, go ahead. Okay, uh, Don, everybody's uh, had yeah, breakfast. It's going up again. Comb their hair, and uh, we're even thinking about shaving today for you. <laughs> but the uh, big question I've got, uh, I want to do that P-52 option 3, the one that the flight plan has optional, at uh, 55 hours or so, and uh, I want to remain at PTC while I do it. Do you concur? We concur. Fine. Sounds like you're ready for another busy day. I don't think I've seen P. Conrad unshaved. Yeah, really look that way, really. I think we'll just practice for a while. Or yeah, Al Bean, for that matter. Now we're going somewhere, but we're not sure where. <laughs> we are. It doesn't look like we've moved very far for two days now. It'll be a long way home. You've been traveling a long way. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, that uh, was Dick Gordon making the report that they had completed breakfast. Uh, brush their teeth and comb their hair <laughs> might even shave <laughs> the uh, p52 reference you can tell the PAOs uh, are having a little bit more fun with this and uh, command module pilot Gordon did indicate uh, he would like to do it around 55 hours ground elapsed time we're at uh, 54 hours uh, 52 minutes now ground elapsed time and this is Apollo control Houston well, 11 was quite serious. Uh, they're definitely more relaxed here this time. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 55 hours, uh, 14 minutes now to the flight of Apollo 12. We presently show Apollo 12 at uh, 165,029 nautical miles above the Earth. Its velocity now reads uh, 2,747 feet per second. Uh, we pick up conversation uh, with Apollo 12 uh, while the uh, computer alignment program is in process. We'll switch now to that conversation. Houston, Apollo 12, you're looking at the disky. That's affirmative. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, you cut out of the uh, Roger, we are watching your disky. Do you have the torquing angle? That is affirmative. 
Okay, we're going to go ahead and torque. Roger. Oh, gear over speed? What? What? When? Uh... Did you see that? That just... They just came out. <laughs> um... Okay. Hold on. We need to not go over that speed, over speed. Uh... I don't know what's going to happen on landing now. And at, uh, they came out. Into the flight. This, is Apollo Control Houston. this is bad. That was weird. I, I didn't touch anything. Huh. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 55 I think it, hours. Because uh, I have the gear mapped to an axis. To I think it might have been a little bit we off, not at the top of the, the spacecraft of, uh, thing. I probably shouldn't map it to that axis. You probably just use Velocity G. Now reads, uh, Thought it'd be fancy, but I think it's just occasionally we'll it's not quite at the top. Now, uh, in which lunar module pilot Al Bean is describing his view of the Earth while looking through binoculars. Houston, Apollo 12. All right, Houston, go. Roger, just looking through the uh, binoculars. Uh, again, at the uh, Earth. And it looks like it's dark everywhere. Well, I hope they uh, work when the time comes. I don't know what's going to happen. The lower left I'm going to sort of call that a glitch. Right in um, there, L.A., San Diego, and I can't see Baja, California. Maybe, oh, no, that's uh, not the place. I want to see if they're busted. Failures? And landing gear? Is no. Tell, they seem the to be uh, working. Maybe you'll be all right. Maybe I'll get caught by surprise when we Roger, land. Like Who knows? But for now, it looks all right to me. Uh, see it real well. There doesn't appear to be any clouds, uh, any large cloud formations near it. There's uh, a nice crescent-shaped uh, large weather system that appears to be several hundred miles uh, out to sea. But I don't know that if that will affect it or not. But uh, the whole area around uh, that southern tip of California there is nice and clear. Very good. As it often is. Southern California, honestly. At uh, 55 hours uh, 46 minutes now into the flight, this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 56 hours, 15 minutes. Now into the mission. Apollo 12 is presently shown at uh, 166,616 nautical miles above the Earth. It's presently traveling at a speed of 2,701 feet per second. Now we're a little bit over. A Additional conversation with Al Bean, in which he further describes uh, views of the Earth. And uh, following that, and uh, we're going down. Capsule That's not good either. Capsule Don Lind will uh, give Dick Gordon an update on uh, the professional football scores for today. We'll pick up those conversations now. Go ahead. been looking at the Earth some more through the binocular, and I think maybe uh, the part of the U.S. that I thought was the lower left-hand corner of the Los Angeles area, it was just about to have sunset, was uh, really not. 
I don't think I can see that because of the its color related to the blue of the uh, rest of the area. I think maybe it was the desert area around Phoenix and uh, around in there. Just thinking about the now, and uh, I'm not able to discern at all the uh, the lower left hand corner of the of the U.S. I think because of the colors. Roger. A little smog out there in L.A. Can't uh, see through it. <laughs> L.A. was... No, I don't think it's smog. I can't see any of that area. I think it's probably just that the earth out there has more trees, shrubs, and uh, the like. And that makes it sort of a gray green, which is sort of like the ocean whenever you look at it from this view. And they just blend in together, and you're not able to, to tell exactly where one starts and one ends. We noticed that a little bit as we uh, were closer to Earth, and now as we get out this far, about all we can see is something very great with those blue gray and blue green. And in this case, it was sort of a red and white. Roger. Okay, so we're going to have to take a look at that and see if we can see what we're seeing. Yeah. LA spot problems uh, would get worse and worse through the 70s, then. Then they instituted policies to help it out a bit. Apollo 12, Houston. Okay, it looks like we're about two to three hundred nautical miles out from Keflavik now. Apollo 12, we Houston. Should potentially start descending because this one takes a while to descend. Lots of speed and altitude. Uh, uh, Roger, go. We lost the very end of that transmission because we were switching antennas, but it sounds like you got a great view up there. Apollo 12, Houston. Then again, we can always double back Apollo and get 12, a better Houston. view of Iceland. Uh, Roger, we so were maybe we'll hang out up here for a little bit longer. The Oilers tied on the last play of the game. 2020 was the final score. What was the score? 2020. 2020, yeah. Up the Saints, too. They're playing the Giants. 25 to 24 for New Orleans. Roger, thank you. Very good. Hey, good news. Yeah, say, so, listen, uh, can you see any of Antarctica from your position there in, in the daylight? All right, I'm going to throw it down a bit. Uh, that's a primitive, John. Uh, we can see a large portion of it, as a matter of fact. It's continually in sunlight. Roger. Uh, listen, I got some other uh, scores for you if you're interested. Go ahead. Okay, AFL uh, Houston and Denver 2020. Uh, Kansas City over New York 34-16. Boston over Cincinnati 25-14. Buffalo over Miami 28-3. Oakland took San Diego 21-16 in the National, as I said, New Orleans over New York 25-24. Chicago 31, Atlanta 48. Philadelphia 17, LA 23. Detroit uh, took St. Louis 20 to nothing. Dallas 41, Washington 28, and LA over Philadelphia 23-17. Hope you enjoy vintage sports scores. And could you give us the exact longitude the Terminator is on the moon at this time? Wait one, we'll get it for you. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, that was uh, capsule communicator uh, Don Lind giving the uh, football scoreboard report. We're at uh, 56 hours, 22 minutes.
Now to the flight, and this is Apollo Control. Okay, we are slowly descending, carefully descending. When I say slowly, I mean by its this usual is standards. Control, Houston, at uh, 56 hours uh, 41 minutes, uh, now to the flight Apollo 12. The Apollo 12 spacecraft at this time, 167, uh, 278 nautical miles away. Its uh, velocity now rating uh, 2,682 feet per second. Uh, Don Lynn has uh, just had a uh, conversation with Apollo 12 concerning uh, our upcoming television show, uh, now scheduled or now set for 1.52 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. Apollo 12, Got to make sure the taxpayers are entertained. Uh, the Terminator on the moon now is uh, one degree west. Uh, we're trying to get it more accurately for you than that, but uh, one degree uh, uh, west is the present uh, Terminator. Okay, thank you. Houston, Apollo 12. Go 12. We're just talking about the TV show this afternoon. And uh, I guess what we'd like to do, and it prob probably hadn't been seen before that I remember, if we could get a high gain antenna angle and the sun in our center hatch. Uh, so we could get as much light as possible into the command module. We'd like to uh, use the TV and try and show the removal of the hatch probe and drogue and, and then take the TV over into the lamp. Very good. We'll get those angles for you. Sounds like a good show. Houston. Go ahead. Uh, just a note for the uh, director of your TV uh, presentation. We'll get the first 29 minutes of uh, that presentation live. The rest of it will be recorded at Honeysuckle and uh, shipped back to us. We'll get it in, in uh, several days, but we'll only get uh, directly through Gold on your okay, first 29 minutes. Be Okay, we'll move it up, uh, make sure we get it on the left here. anyway. Okay, just wanted to make sure you got all your uh, uh, best uh, performance in the first uh, period. <laughs> we'll figure out something, Don. Very good. Important to uh, get this this is Apollo Done properly. Control, Houston. Uh, that was Pete Conrad who uh, first brought up the subject of television. As uh, you heard uh, that final comment uh, from Dick Gordon, we uh, could uh, move up the uh, time of uh, lunar module transfer, or transfer of the crew to the lunar module uh, to coincide with the uh, scheduled television time. We're now at uh, 56 hours, uh, 44 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Big pause. Yeah, it's almost over. I should probably focus on flying. Descent this is, is Apollo Control, Houston, potentially at, uh, 57 iffy. 57 hours at 10 minutes now on the flight Apollo 12. We've uh, had no uh, conversation with Apollo 12 uh, since our last report. However, uh, we thought we would uh, pass along uh, altitude and velocity updates at this time. Apollo 12 is presently shown at an altitude of 60... 168,000 and uh, 23 nautical miles. Its velocity now shown at 2,660 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston.
This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 57 hours, uh, 35 minutes, uh, now into the flight Apollo 12. We currently show Apollo 12 at uh, 168,650 nautical miles above the Earth. Its uh, velocity now reading 2,642 feet per second. Capsule communicator Don Lind uh, has uh, just chatted with uh, Al Bean on the subject of tuna fish spread. We'll tune in <laughs> oh, on this. That now. oh, this. Oh, uh, this. Apollo 12. Uh, go ahead, uh, 12. How about asking the food experts down there? Uh, we had a uh, can of uh, tuna fish spread salad last night. Yeah, there's about a half a can left today, and that stuff's still good to eat, isn't it? <laughs> we'll check. I'll be right back with you. Damn it, they shouldn't even have asked. Thank you. I guess they were having well, an internal debate. Go ahead. Uh, the surgeon suggests you try a new one. New can. Don't waste it. Well, Dick has this one in his hot hand. Uh, we just opened it last night. Uh, Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, we're still checking with some people down here whether there's any problem over that tuna fish, but why don't you hold off eating it until we get a better answer for you. <laughs> Something to my okay. eye. This is Apollo Control, Houston. At least for now, the uh, consumption of tuna fish spread uh, one day opened remains an open item. <laughs> we'll keep you posted. He couldn't on help conference. himself. He couldn't help himself. At uh, Remains 57 an open hours, item. Uh, 37 minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, I think uh, we're going to break below the speed of sound now. And that'll probably give us a lot of lift and. In my experience, I have to manage that carefully. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, one at uh, 57 hours of uh, 44 minutes into the flight Apollo 12. Apollo 12's altitude now reads 168,882 nautical miles. Its velocity now 2,635 uh, feet per second. We've uh, closed the uh, tuna fish question. <laughs> we'll switch now to uh, Don Bean's or er, uh, Don Lynn's conversation with the spacecraft. Apollo 12, Houston. Uh, maybe I should stay above the speed of sound at the Apollo moment. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. You can't imagine what consternation your tuna fish question has raised down here. <laughs> we have a wide diversity of opinions. I decided it was, the, well, uh, I decided it was okay. Well, we have a vote that it's okay. The majority says throw it away. There's a minority report that says everybody can eat it except Vic Gordon. <laughs> okay, that's good. Roger, they recommend that you uh, probably throw it away. I think it's already been eaten. Okay. <laughs> Definitely think it was already eaten. At uh, 57 hours, uh, 45 minutes of the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. looking at the map trying to figure out whether I want to slow down or not yet. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 58 hours 23 minutes now into the flight. Apollo 12. We've uh, had no conversation uh, with the Apollo 12 crew since our last report. Presently uh, we show an altitude of 169,000 
851 nautical miles for Apollo 12. Its uh, velocity now reads 2,607 feet per second. We're at uh, 58 hours, 23 minutes, and this is Apollo Control Houston. We're definitely under 100 nautical miles this is Apollo from Control Houston at the destination. Hours. 35 minutes now into the flight. We presently show Apollo 12 at an altitude of 170,159 right. nautical miles. I think I'll go below miles. Mach now. Its velocity now 2,599 feet per second. We have just received a report from Commander Pete Conrad speaking uh, for the All Navy Apollo 12 crew, describing what they've been doing today. We'll switch to that report. All Navy, he Hello, puts in. Apollo 12. Apollo 12, go ahead. Uh, Roger, do you have a report on the family's activities today? Uh, negative. We'll see if we can find out what's been going on over here. Thank you. Okay. Houston, uh, I tell you what we've been doing since we got up this morning, just for your information. We cleaned the spacecraft fore and aft and all lower decks and ladders, cleaned up the garbage, and restowed everything. And uh, everybody out of bath, everybody shaved, and uh, Al studying the moon, I'm studying descent. deck has been fitting the SL-158, making sure it fits and works. And uh, that's occupied us for about the last three hours. Uh, okay. Uh, Looks like a uh, clean drop out of the speed of sound. Sort of like area, dropping out of light speed, but not quite. The shade box and uh, down next to the uh, O2 mass. Whoa, uh, no, I didn't want to do that. We, uh, I didn't want to pitch up here, yet. Uh, oh, good. Good, you sound incredibly neat. <laughs> I've got much else to do, pal. We'll get your uh, re the reports on your family. Also, in a go ahead. Okay. Also, as uh, we're approaching the moon, of course, we're beginning to notice less and less of the moon. We're moving out in front of it, and uh, all of although the Terminator is coming around, we're beginning to see uh, less and less of the illuminated portion of the moon, and it's becoming quite noticeable to us now. Roger. That was uh, Capsule Communicator Don Lind uh, speaking with Pete Conrad aboard the Apollo 12 spacecraft. We're at uh, 58 hours, uh, 38 minutes now on the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, we are continuing our descent. Is it visible? Ah, there it is. It's on our map now. Uh, that's the one, Keflavik. So good times. Still gotta be super respectful of the Concord's awesome power as well as ability to just fall out of the air. <laughs> so looks like we'll have this a fairly a clear day at Keflavik. At, uh, 59 hours uh, three minutes into the flight. Apollo 12 now at an altitude of 170,851 nautical miles. Its velocity now reading uh, 2,579 feet per second. Capsule communicator Don Lind has just passed along uh, family reports uh, to the Apollo 12 crew. We'll play those for you now. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. 
Uh, Roger, just checked with your uh, families. Uh, Pete, Jane reports that uh, they've had a very quiet Sunday afternoon there. Everybody's home and everybody's well, and uh, there's just really not much excitement going on. It's uh, just been a very quiet afternoon over at your house. Uh, Dick, Barbara says... Okay. Uh, Barbara reports uh, to you, Dick, that uh, Sharon and Lynn Diamond are over for the evening, and they're expecting the Irwins over momentarily, and Jim McDivitt just left. She uh, says the boys have gone back to school, and uh, uh, she thought things were going to be pretty quiet, but between Barbara and Karen, uh, she's got so many giggling girls around there that uh, it's uh, more noisy than she thought. The other thing she pointed out was that uh, Father Conley had been over and had noticed Barbara having a nap uh, this afternoon. And coming out of uh, church this evening, he commented in uh, front of some of the people standing there in the church that the last time he saw her, she, was, she had been asleep. And uh, this was uh, much to her consternation. <laughs> also, Barbara asked that you guys talk a little bit more. She says she certainly expected more conversation out of you than she's been getting. Uh, Al, your wife uh, reported that uh, they're all missing you. They're extremely proud of you. Up, 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 up. Apollo 12, Houston, how do you hear? Houston, uh, 12. Uh, Roger, how do you hear now, Pete? Apollo 12, Houston. I swear, every time they lose communications, it's always nerve-wracking. Apollo 12, Houston. Hello, Houston 12. Uh, 12, Houston, you read? Apollo 12, Houston. Houston 12, are you locked up now? Apollo 12, Houston, you read me now? Uh, Roger, loud and clear. How are you? Uh, I reach you very fine. Sorry about switching antennas there. Uh, Al, your, uh, as I started to say, your wife uh, says that the family is missing you. They're uh, very proud of how the fight's going along and that they'll certainly be watching uh, tomorrow. The children are all fine. Break, break. Uh, we're not getting you at all, Don. I, whether you're having a sight hand over or something, uh, we've only gotten about two, three words in the last five minutes. Uh, Roger, how do you hear me now? We, uh, we're just switching antennas. Uh, Roger, loud and clear. And uh, you start cutting out after you said that uh, Father Conley was over and Barbara was taking a nap. Can you go back to that point? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Father Conley had been over in the afternoon and had uh, seen Barbara taking a nap. So coming out of church this evening, in front of some of the members of the congregation, he said that the last time he'd seen her, she was asleep. And this was uh, very uh, embarrassing to her at the moment. Now everybody well, knows. Also, Barbara had the comment for the whole crew that she's a little disappointed in how much you're talking. She certainly wanted you, expected that you'd talk more than she's been hearing lately. We're talking, she's just not hearing. She also uh, requests that when you talk, uh, try to be a little funnier. <laughs> how could they be funnier, honestly? Uh, He's got to be sarcastic. Your wife. Uh, she said that the uh, family are missing you and that they're extremely proud of how the flight's been going. They'll be watching uh, tomorrow. And also she wanted you to know that all the children were fine. This evening when uh, Amy was uh, going to bed, she uh, turned to her mother and she said, I want to see my daddy. I want to touch him. So uh, you're being missed. Also, she concurs with the... Uh, decision on the tuna fish. She uh, definitely was happy that you didn't eat the uh, day-old tuna fish. <laughs> and that's about all the family has to report. Oh. Okay, thank you, Don. One other item for Pete. The uh, board of directors has had a meeting and the uh, VFR has been uh, replaced with uh, IFR Conrad from now on. <laughs> I understand, okay? Very good.
Roger. Lots of pulling of legs in Golly, this report. We're going to have to get another Saturn V right because we sure missed the last one. Very good. Roger, Saturn V right. Roger, Saturn V right. I forget which one's the longer yeah. runway. Uh, things are going so well, we've decided that you do not need a state vector update at this time, so uh, things are going along very nicely. Okay, what's your first hack on FCC-4? Just about three feet a second. Are we going to do it or not? We're still evaluating. Okay. Apollo Control, Houston. That was Dick Gordon that suggested the uh, Apollo 12 crew might need another ride on the Saturn V. We're at 59 hours, uh, 10 minutes down to the flight. All right, this is Apollo we've got Control, Houston. a little corner of Iceland here. Chugging along pretty quickly, actually. Trying to get uh, down below 250 knots as we get below 10,000 feet. Remarkable performance right now <laughs> compared to my usual. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 59 hours 29 minutes now into the flight of Apollo 12. Almost Apollo made me wonder if I was recording or not. Of oh, we, we need miles. to pitch down now. Its velocity now reading uh, 2,500 and uh, 60 slow. feet per second. We've only had one brief conversational exchange uh, with uh, Apollo 12 since our last report, and we'll play that now. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, would you give us H2 tank heater number two to Otto? H2 heater number two to Otto. Roger, thank you. You're welcome. That was Commander Pete Conrad aboard the spacecraft, and at uh, 59 hours uh, 30 minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Yeah, it's uh, performing quite well suddenly. Must not have it, a lot of autogen to gen. Well, there's the interesting landscape of Iceland, uh, briefly. This is Apollo Control Houston at 59 hours, uh, 39 minutes down to the flight. Apollo 12 presently at uh, 171,700. Just a little corner of it. Miles in altitude. Its velocity now reading uh, 2,554 feet per second. We'll pick up a conversation. Uh, in which uh, Al Bean describes uh, looking at the sun with binoculars. I assume with protection, right? Houston, uh, Apollo 12. Go ahead, 12. We've been looking out at the sun with our uh, binocular. I think that's the and, monocular. Uh, the, uh, sun glass that goes with the... Sunglass, uh, there we go. Smart uh, astronauts. See? 30, 40 degrees in, about the equator. Other than that, uh, it doesn't, we can't see anything else. We might have to go around, I don't We're know. Good. If they're 30 or 40 degrees in, you won't have to worry about any flare particles from them. Who's worried? <laughs> Sounds like you guys are having a real good review of astronomy this afternoon. Studying astronomy, geography, geology. Strictly speaking, going faster than I ought to. Other things up here. Roger. Really, not a lot to do on the way out. You've got uh, your systems to monitor, and uh, 
Uh, you gotta eat and keep yourself clean, get some sleep. And uh, except for that, you're free to do a little. Uh, I think I'll just fly by and come around. Out the window and study in the uh, checklists and maps and things that you're gonna be using when you get to the lunar orbit. You earned so it. Turns out to be a pretty pleasant trip. Yeah, we'll make it all up starting tomorrow. Be you know, this is your old social director speaking. One thing I'll guarantee you, those dark spots on the sun aren't clouds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought it was particularly appropriate since we were going to the ocean of storms and we bailed out of the earth to just one of them. How about that? Very appropriate, now that he mentions it. Okay, let's see if uh, our landing gear actually deploys. Oh, wow, that was sudden. Well, hopefully it's all right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the way it always happens. Uh. One thing you got the advantage of is uh, we couldn't see oh, flickering. Now. I don't like that. Until we got just bit right nearly to it, but that westerly site, you probably got a pretty good view of it now. Yeah, of course, it's getting uh, the illuminated. Oh, well, let's get that visor down, down too. Less and less all the time. Really I don't know when they actually lower it, but this is as good as any other time. I'm not planning to go very fast. One other thing I haven't really checked is the reversers. Hopefully they work. Negative, we don't need that. Things are really okay. I was at press level looking at them this morning. He sounds like he's begging for something to do. He was probably disappointed that he couldn't do an alignment. <laughs> really good. Uh, we'll try to get you some uh, drift numbers. Okay. Apollo 12, uh, your drifts are uh, 1.2 Meru on uh, all axes or less. Uh, one of them's even lower than that. Up tape issue. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, the gentleman in the Mission Control Center who prefaced his conversation with uh, Bino, this is your old social director, is Colonel Tom Stafford. Ah. Who, uh, as you will recall, was the uh, commander on Apollo 12. Shortly after Tom came on the line, uh, commander of Apollo 12, uh, Pete Conrad, uh, chimed into the conversation. It's, uh, anyway. I think there was something We're a little at, bit uh, 59 hours the other way around uh, kind of thing. Minutes, uh, we've just picked up conversation with the crew again, and uh, we'll start that now. Apollo 12, Houston. Sure is. Did y'all learn any special tricks about uh, viewing the Earth or the moon? Uh, did you think we haven't tried? No, I think we've passed on all the basic information, and uh, it's just quite a view to see it rotate uh, through the windows there and uh, take pictures of it. Hey, Tom, during launch, I usually tell Al which lights are on him. He has electrical problem. Uh, Friday, all I could look, do is look over and tell him, I said, hey, Al, they're all on. Now uh, we can probably plan some good simulations from now on. <laughs> Everybody's gonna have to go through the lightning strike simulation now. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, did you get that uh, drift uh, report? Uh, your uh, your platform. Let the Kobayashi Maru now. To Meru on all axes. I have to say, um, having the visor oh, right. down doesn't help a whole lot. 
from this point We're of view. At, uh, 59 hours uh, 46 minutes at present, and uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Cheat a little. Oh, we're, uh, we're at speed. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, 59 hours, uh, 48 minutes now into the flight. Apollo 12 presently at uh, 171,942 nautical miles. Its velocity now reading uh, 2,548 feet per second. Tom Stafford uh, has uh, just called the crew to uh, ask about uh, their sleeping oh. bag bags and uh, generally carry on a chat session. We'll switch to that conversation. Ah, now. darn it. I kept throttle up too long after going slow. Shoot. Apollo 12, Houston, and how's your sleeping bags working out up there, Pete? Over. Oh, the, the yaw is actually pretty uh, good on good. this. Tom, uh, first night, uh, uh, I uh, sink rate, bag, you say? I can't I see a darn thing. Uh, I don't like, oh, okay, well, we're, da uh, we're, we're gonna have to go down now. No, I think I'm gonna uh, touch and go at that point. That was not good at all. That didn't sound good at all. Doesn't look like I busted anything. I think it was just a hard touch, but... Yeah, I need to, like, shift my eye point up. I need to figure out how to do that. Um, so, I need to, like, sit up straight. Move. Move up. Well, it's not parented. Uh, up slow. Control up. All right. Um... Well, well, maybe that'll like help. The total rod count shows that you got practically nothing up there. All right. Well, well let's go through the traffic line pattern. Line they, they call it 90 milli rods. That's less than one three hundredth of what uh, atomic workers can get. Apollo Control Houston, uh, that was uh, Pete Conrad first talking with uh, Tom Stafford and then followed uh, by Dick Gordon. We're at uh, 59 hours, uh, 50 minutes into the flight and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, maybe. We'll see. This is Apollo Control. Sorry, this is ending up a lot uh, longer hours, than the other uh, ones. 17 minutes. Well, except for the flight. Harrier. Apollo 12, presently at an altitude of 172,658 nautical miles. Its uh, velocity now reads uh, 2,527 feet per second. Uh, we have not uh, spoken with the crew uh, since our last report. Oh, there it is. And the uh, atmosphere and mission control at uh, this time is is quiet. As the uh, parade flight controllers uh, making notes, looking into their consoles and uh, planning ahead for a, a more active uh, day tomorrow. We're at 60 hours, 18 minutes, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh. 
Okay. Let's see. I don't feel like I need a whole lot of distance, but I need to get a little bit lower. We're at 3,000 feet. This is Apollo feet. Control Houston at uh, 60 hours uh, 54 minutes now into the flight to Apollo 12. Apollo uh, 12 presently shows an altitude of uh, 173,531 nautical miles above the Earth. The uh, spacecraft velocity now reads uh, 2,502 feet per second. Capsule communicator Don Lind uh, has uh, conversed briefly uh, with Apollo 12 and we'll play that conversation for you now. Uh, Houston Apollo 12. Go ahead, 12. Roger, at uh, 6115, do you want an O2 fuel cell purge and a wastewater dump like the flight plan calls for? That's affirmative. Okay, and what do you want us to dump the water to, 10%? Uh, 12, we'd like to recommend that you dump to zero since we're going to have quite a time before we'll have another opportunity for a dump. Okay. That was uh, Lunar Module Pilot uh, Al Bean aboard Apollo 12 talking uh, with Mission Control in Houston. We're at uh, 60 hours uh, 55 minutes and this is Apollo Control Houston. Let's see, didn't quite make that turn properly. All right, uh, just for safety's sake, this I've got to move myself up even Houston more. At uh, 61 hours, 19 minutes now into the flight. Apollo 12 uh, continuing on its course yeah, to the moon, a little bit uh, better. at an altitude of 174,130 nautical miles. Continuing to slow down, its uh, velocity now reads uh, 2,485 uh, feet per second. Pete Conrad uh, just called in and received a bit of, su of a surprise. The uh, gentleman at the uh, Capcom console, at least for this moment, is uh, Dave Scott, uh, backup commander for Apollo 12. We'll switch to that conversation. Houston, Apollo 12. 12, Houston. Roger. Okay, one one nice. Purge, Don't one take up. too long, please. Roger. Come on. That, okay. I didn't know where the wheels were, to be honest. What are you doing, Good evening, on the David? Watching after you. Apollo oh, Control, great. Houston, uh, as was previously reported, uh, mid course correction uh, number three uh, was deleted from the flight plan. The uh, requirement uh, for the uh, mid-course correction number four burn is uh, still being evaluated in mission control. Okay, I think the reverse has worked. Case, uh, if, <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I probably would have messed up. This burn uh, is accomplished. Uh, its magnitude uh, will be at most very small. Perhaps Not exactly on the center line, feet but... Per second. Television uh, is scheduled for tomorrow morning. Uh, which is rapidly approaching uh, for tomorrow morning at uh, one fifty. Didn't really notice how the Central rudder time. bits are and as staggered. Reported, uh, by the crew earlier, uh, they will probably move their lunar module uh, transfer time forward to coincide with the uh, twenty-nine minutes of television, uh, which will be carried uh, live. We're at sixty-one hours. 21 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Landing gear held up. I'm going to pause the audio there. I miss turning for the taxiway. Uh... Okay, made it, made it, made it. Oh, over, oversteered, oversteered.
Okay, we are continuing to taxi in my, my peculiar way. And uh, we made it. We made it to uh, Keflavik in Iceland. And next time I'm going to fly an Avril Vulcan from here to Edinburgh. And that's a freeware Avril Vulcan. Fairly unique plane and should be interesting. Gotta watch the fuel on that because it can guzzle it pretty badly. Anyway, and so with the Concorde here, a uh, little bit of trouble with it, but uh, all right in the end. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.